Kia ora. Hey, um, I wore my pinstripe today because um, you've been a bit of a fashion setter. Well. Bit of a trailblazer. No, let me tell you, when I was at law school, we couldn't afford anything. And when it came to the law school ball, we had to go down to the Salvation Army, get these old suits, which were usually from <laughs> a period long before that. They were double-breasted, take them to the dry cleaners, and all of a sudden we could go to the ball and afford, afford it. But then again, double-breasted suits came back in again. You're rocking it, you're rocking it. I, I, don't, I can't even remember going to a law school ball. Now, it looks like you're that close once again to being the kingmaker. So, um, possible? Um, what do you mean? Let me tell you something. This election is going to be won by ordinary people. People at the grassroots of our society. They've been shut out, they're not answering the polls, they're just waiting to tell you that they on election day are the master. And one guy and one party understands that. That party's called New Zealand First. Well, is it looking like you're going to be the kingmaker? And look, uh, I don't think um, the media party grasps what's happening in this country at the moment. There's a quiet democratic revolution going on, a kickback from ordinary people. And the mainstream media, which I'm not saying it's you, just don't get it. So, and so when you say it looks like it, no, I know what the polls are saying, the polls that I've got, and we're on a blast on our way back big time. To govern a country, you need experience. And this is not our first rodeo. Were you channeling one of those spates ads? No. No? All I was saying is, to run a country, you need experience. And this is not my first rodeo. But it is for the rest of them, and it's showing up big time in this campaign. So the New Zealand um, first slogan is, take our country back, so... No, let's take back our country. Oh, I can't I'll get mixed up with them. I know. Well, you so... and National got the back in the whole thing. You do realise that words matter. Let's take back our country. I'm going to talk to you about words matter too, because some of your words that you're tossing out there are quite inflammatory. Oh, really? Yeah. But anyway, let's go back to the Give slogan. A, as, as, a, as a Fijian friend of mine used to say at law school when the lecturer was talking, give me a for instance. <laughs> oh, I can give you a for instance. Do we want to go there now? Oh, no, I'll hold it back. Um, do you mean take it back, take the country back from somebody or was it some magical time in the past? What there do you lot, mean? There, do were, you mean? there were a lot of essential qualities to a democracy uh, and to the law the rule of law and those fundamental things that have been taken away from us very subtly. For example, why are we having people ramming down our throats a name from French Polynesia called Aotearoa? We know if we're in Ngai Tahoe in the South Island, it's an insult to why Ponama is the name down there. And it's not even named for the North Island. But here we go. William Pibber Reeves, way back in the 1890s, a colonialist, I might say, set the tone of this name Never used it at the Treaty of Waitangi in, uh, in 1840. And all of a sudden, a whole lot of my radicals are going for it. And their fellow traveller, <laughs> white, white colleagues. This is awful. This and is, I can go this, on and I can go you, on. And you I can, have. I can go on and on. I can talk about the dual health system we've got now. Waka Kotahi, who can't even fix up the potholes on the east coast or up north in Hokianga and everybody else. More concerned about this sort of image. And I could go on and on and tell you why we need to take back our country because that's been taken away from us with no mandate, no manifesto, no authority, no permission whatsoever. And these are your big concerns about the bilingual signs and Excuse sort of me. stuff like that. I, I was in Parliament with um, Muldoon at a time when we started Kohanga, Kohanga Real. Do you not yeah. know that? I do know that. Uh, you yeah, remember, I know, but... Yeah, do you remember, you, you remember who, started, who financed the um, biggest surge of Maori students at university? I'm not talking about... I'm, I'm wondering why you're kind of obsessed about Aotearoa, um, where Maori come from, bilingual science, when, you're, when you've had a track record of actually challenging really big issues. I'm not obsessed by it. I just stated a fact. But you're, I said Maori... We came 
are from a place called Hawaii. Why, why are you bothering to even talk about that? Because you keep on saying we're indigenous. No, you keep on making that some kind of a big issue when there's lots of other big why issues. Are you so tr why are you personally so troubled by these facts? <laughs> why can't you go back to the roots Tell of what, your... What is your canoe? No, I'm not going to go down What is your waka? Mā I'm, not, I'm asking the are questions. Are you mā tātou? I'm asking the questions, te arawa. Gee whiz. Now, look, <laughs> we're talking with David Seymour today after this. Uh, well, but when you're talking to him, talk to him, but you're talking to me now. I know. I'm asking you a question. Um, he could potentially be the next Deputy Prime Minister. Do you think you could work with him? I came to speak to you about a party called New Zealand First. I'm talking to you how, about that. And how we are important for the next government of this country. Because people are wanting a change, they want a change to a much better government. Well, you want to take everything back. But I'm not here to talk about anybody else. Oh, no, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering, because he's been labelled the most dangerous man in New Zealand. Who? David Seymour. <laughs> are you trying not to laugh? Well, I mean, what do you make of his leadership style? And as a politician? You've been around the traps. Save your questions for that. You're talking to Winston Peters now in a party called New Zealand First. That's been around in the most successful third party in this country's history since well, 1893. You know because you have been around mm. and you've formed coalitions and you've had all these different agreements, so you know this stuff. So he's saying something about um, he'll, he'll deliver on confidence but withhold you're supply. Back, you're, no, look, you're going to make a mistake. I'm not answering these questions. Oh, no, no, just wondering, is that feasible? Just forget that he If you want to talk it. to the adult in the room, talk to me about my party. OK, we'll put, talk to you about your party. Um, so New Zealand... We do have food. long trousers. <laughs> New Zealand First turns 30 this year. We turned 30. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. So you were formed as a backlash, a political backlash to neoliberalism. Yeah, I mean, boom. Mm. So it looks like the other parties want to bring it back. How are you going to mitigate that? Principle? If the people give New Zealand First the MPs that we need to do it, we'll make sure this country gets back the way it should be. So you're going to be able to turn that around. Yes. That's here. So what I just, I've looked through... Have you been, to, have you been down to a Porky recently? Because down there is the new, brand new muscle factory. And, yes. And the biggest yes. muscle farm in the world is going in right down there. Yes. And we've done it over and over and over again with the provincial growth fund, which they all said was a slush fund. What a disgrace this is. We want to rebuild New Zealand, all the provinces, all those communities. We, well, Portuguese very shortly will be a great and exciting place to be back in. I because, love Portuguese. I love Portuguese. Yes. So it's only one example, you know. Yeah. So I just when I go through your website, I can't see any big whiz bang policies. You know, like previously it was um, gold cards, um, free doctors, visits for kids. Are you want to give me some advice how no, to win this I, campaign? I see, no, no. <laughs> I just want to see. Uh, get me excited. I'm very, I'm very touched. But the reality is, this is a grassroots campaign. Well, we've been on for two years on a mission to go and talk to ordinary New Zealanders. The mainstream media has Cinderellaised us, marginalised us, and uh, demonised us in every respect. Who's us? A party called New Zealand First. We've packed the halls, massive meetings, not one comment from any mainstream media person. No, but uh, and today no, actually, I've seen pictures of you. In your yeah, 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 on my yeah. social pages, yes, you have, but not from the mainstream media. The other parties can go to an opening of a post office or the opening of an envelope and they're getting headlines. It's a disgrace. And the media in this country is also a terrible disgrace. Now, it's very sad to say because I do believe in the power of the fourth estate and the essential nature of an independent uh, group of media people telling the public what's going on. So I haven't seen any big was being policies. Really? I just see a lot of rhetoric. Really? Yeah. And this kind of distraction you, about you did, you didn't see toilets a, and well, bilingual me, uh, signs. Uh, well, excuse me. In that one question, you've given your own judgment. If you don't think that women and young girls going into the toilet are entitled to a thing called safety, then you've not been listening. Do you You're not know paying something? Attention. I go to so many different hui and are involved in so many networks and not once have I heard one woman say to me, oh, my God, I'm terrified to go into the bathroom. How did this become one of your sort of linchpin kind of policies? Because women 
wrote to me and said, look, I'm so concerned. My daughter's not going to the bathroom at school because she doesn't think she's safe there. And you're nodding your head like you know. Well, why don't we leave it there? I'm sorry, I was trying not to do that. <laughs> no, why don't we... Yes, but look, body language is important. And I can tell disbelief when I'm looking at it because you're not, you're not listening, and I am. Let's find out who knows what they're talking about because when women write to me, I pay attention. You know, you said to me the last time, words matter. Uh, and then you've been tossing out words like apartheid, separatism, No, but I, I was going to explain to you, you said you've never seen any big policies. Yes, you have. I'm getting rid of Pharmac and getting a model that does work. And I put $1.3 billion into pharmaceuticals of first world quality. Get ourselves about 60% where Australia is. It's a disaster. I believe health should be an investment. It's about human capital. And I've seen a disaster in this country going over many years. Every other party supports it, and no, I don't. That is a massive policy. And also the therapeutic products legislation went through just a, uh, last month. Uh, what a disgrace. Shutting down all the therapeutic products available in New Zealand for big farm internationally. Those are two big things. You're not listening, but I am. And that's going to change this election. I have heard you, and you, you've kind of gone on off in a bit of a tangent in terms of who's the Indigenous people, language, and, you know, <laughs> I mean, look, hey, I saw Scotty Morrison last night, and he said he wasn't happy with the way that you dropped him in into your corridor. I want to understand how we became Māori, how we connect to the rest of the Pacific, and how our ancestors explored such a vast ocean. Here's Scotty Morrison, paid for by the taxpayer on TV1. You're all having this exciting program about where we came from. When I said, uh oh, oh, this is awful, isn't it? Give me a break. I went to Cook Islands once. I went to Cook Islands the first time I went there. This very senior Cook Islander said to me from way back, Welcome home. I knew exactly so, what he meant. So what? You well, know, you can't, you, be, have... you can't be indigenous in two countries, can you? I don't know what you're doing there with all that carry on. Why do you use words like apartheid when you know how offensive they are to Māori and how that creates conflict out in the community? It's a little bit of a dog whistle. Well, it's quite a big dog whistle. Well, no, that's your judgment, it's a dog whistle. That's, that's a dog whistle. That's, that's your judgment. My you don't think it's a dog my whistle? My judgment as someone who began my career acting from the biggest Māori land case in this country, including Europeans, against the then Labor government and the Whangarei County Council and all those years on, Mount Hikurangi. Yes. Right? yes. Manaki Toiwi, the biggest increase in Ma of Māori students' university. Who financed Kapahaka? Who financed the Māori Sports Awards and so many other things? And as and, and Kanga Rail. Who financed the Māori Women's Welfare now, League? That's, no, I no, understand. No, but no, so no, why no, no, are you no, using no, that word now? Apartheid. Don't interrupt me like this. Why are you? The Māori Women's Welfare League was put on an independent base by a guy called Winston Peters, right? Now I can go on all afternoon about what I've done. I know them, and that's what. And you. That's what and when I say it's saying. apartheid, it is apartheid. What are you talking about? How is that apartheid? Well, if you don't realise that Three Waters was all about apartheid. Would you want to get rid of the Māori Health Authority? Yes. Why? It's a massive failure. Says who? <laughs> they've done the recent analysis of it, and they've not better put it out. Oh, like an, about a year's worth of establishment. Oh, give me. I a... mean, if you keep doing the same old thing. You get the same old oh, results. Oh, yes. Here we go. Here we go. Is I'm that a... not true? No, here we go. Look, with the greatest respect. If you keep doing the I'm same... not going to stand by while somebody thinks they're going to ram down my throat failure. You're doing that thing. No. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I know what it is to be first world. I know and I saw the American civil rights movement as a young person. And they never took their eye off the prize. They wanted to bust into the best of European institutions. And they did. And they ended up with a black American president and now a black American vice president. Does, that, no, 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 does no. that mean it's all perfect you want for all the, blacks no, no, in America? No, no, no. I came here to discuss rational with you, but if you want an argument, as Elvis I'm would trying say, to understand as your Elvis argument. would say, if you're looking for trouble, you come to the right place. I'm going to defend equality because I hate this idea of affirmative action, which says this. You know what affirmative action says? Uh, you're Maori, so you'll need my help to be anybody. Do you know that all the research... That inverse, oh, that inverse right. racism I detest with a, and I have all my life. Who are, you, who are you sending that message out to? To your... To Māori? To your viewers. I hope they get what I'm saying here. No, well, a whole bunch will understand that ethnicity and need converges and you're just trying to reduce it down to a very simplistic ethnicity argument. 
and need Do you, know, do you know that all the research shows that Māori are disproportionately represented across all the worst indicators in health? Bulldust. Are you? You're not. No. The, do, you, do you do your policy me, on evidence? Excuse me. Evidence. Uh, are you here to listen to me or are you on here yourself? I'm asking you a question. Right? Evidence. Listen, let me just tell you this. I watched the All Blacks. I watched the, the Warriors. I watched the New Zealand uh, women's team and soccer team, the whole hundred yards, and the rugby team. Filled with successful Māori everywhere. Not competing against the New Zealanders. They're competing against the best in the world. I want to take that attitude into a thing called politics and to every part of our life. And I'm trying to do it and we're doing it. So you think the institutions, health, education and justice, they're all caterpie? No, of course well, I don't well, think that. Well, so we've got some very, very... They're not catered pie for white people, let alone Maori people. So we've got some very, very bright people. A lot of researchers, a lot of experts, a lot of doctors. and They've actually looked across it over a number of years and wanted to make substantial change to deliver to the group that is, is not served well, is not served the best by the, the health system, for example. And you want to get rid of that. I mean, well, why, don't you and I, why, why don't you and I change places? And I ask the questions, you, you, and you give the interview. No, I just wanted the answer. No, you just gave me a long diatribe about nothing. Oh, I can see with that little sidestep that you're doing there. No, so you, no, you gave me a diatribe about nothing. Look, I was there when David Longy brought in tomorrow's schools, and the standards from the last next, next three decades went straight downhill. Do you believe and, that? And, and, and guess who's the who's the biggest victim of this? Young Māori. Do you believe that Māori? Uh, disproportionately represented across all health indicators? In some, yes, and, and some not. So do you think that Māori are bright enough to come up with some ideas to address those things? Well, of course they are. Oh, so then why do you want to get rid of something that has had strong Māori input that even the Pākehā experts... You don't get it. You don't get it. No, uh, you don't. Over 100 years ago, a Māori genius called Pomare was the Minister of Health. Way back after the Spanish flu... He brought modern medicine to Māori. You're not listening. I am. I know what he did. Oh, I, I admire know. this person. And we didn't need a change. We just needed people like poor Māori. So you believe that Māori have expertise? Of course I do. I just recited you one. Yeah, but you're not interested in the system changing the institution so it serves the, the needs of Māori. Oh, with respect. I mean, I can't believe you're saying this. I... With respect doesn't mean... That means you don't have any respect. No, well you, well, 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 you can say that. Muldoon made that statement, not me. So you're vocally against any efforts to include Māori in decision-making that might serve oh, our needs? Oh, give me a break. Look, I came to Parliament when in all those years since 1867, only three had ever got to Parliament in a European seat. I'm one of them. I'm the fourth one. Over all over 100 years. And, and in that change, no... And I campaigned to change the electoral system of this country and I'm accused of bringing in MMP. And MMP now sees 27, 28 members of parliament who've got some Māori in them. It was transformed the whole thing. And having done all that, you're sitting here and saying to me that I don't believe in a Māori cause. Depending on what polls you're reading, this election is either going to be a tight race or a runaway win for National and Christopher Luxon. Labor's ruled out a coalition with New Zealand First, National's sitting on the fence, and Winston Peters' arch-nemesis act is lobbing pot tots at him. And for someone who didn't want to talk about David Seymour, well... Are you and David um, Seymour going to work together? You're both from up north, you're both Māori. I mean, how does that all work? Oh, for goodness sake, David Seymour discovered his Maoriness the same way Columbus discovered America, purely by accident. That's a bit of a low blow. It's not a low blow, it's a fact. Please don't tell me uh, that you put me in the same category with him. No, you're saying in that... In terms of working for Maori all my life, I have. I'm saying that there's so many... Who settled West Coast leases? Your... I remember when Ka'awatea came out. Yes. You received it. And that was a great report. Denise Henry, another northerner, she was on that. And they made a, a, a declaration or, you know, part of their report was that Māori determine and design 
services to meet Māori needs, but that the institutions themselves should transform. Well, I'm so pleased. You received I'm that, sorry, eh? I'm so pleased you read you, 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 it. was a good report, I'm eh? I'm so pleased you remembered that because I got fired for it. Yeah, and it recommended actually a Māori education authority. Do you remember that? But there was a Māori education authority before that. There's not one now. Yeah, this is charming stuff. I'm not here to give a history lesson, but there was one before that. But, um, and M Ministry of Māori Development came yes. out of that, right? No, excuse me, I was the minister that brought in the Minister of Māori yeah, Development. Yeah, I know. David Seymour wants to get rid of it. Um, this is tragic. I should come back later and have another interview. Oh, here, Dempita, it, don't be so grumpy. You spend, no, you're spending all your time talking about someone else. Well, it's just that there's the potential for you to work together, so... No, no, look, look with respect. This country is in a massive economic crisis. We face the next 10 years of deficits, and the people who are going to lose the most are not the squeezed middle. They're the people at the bottom, or many of whom are going to be Māori. And they're arguing about these rights when I want for Māori affordable, safe home. I want them to be, get a health, uh, health treatment if they should ever need it. I want them to get on the escalators of education and go as far as they like, as I was able to do one time because I was lucky enough. And I want them on first world wages. Yeah, but That's what I want. That's what we and that's want. That's my focus. That's what we want. No, you're, it still, you're going no, off on no, a tangent talking no, about no, no, it isn't. indigenous no, you people, and you and you, you and your ilk on every other work project that doesn't matter. Oh, you matter. do that all the time. Well, not every work what does project... work mean? Well, work means I woke up yesterday and I know more than you. No, it doesn't actually. Is that your definition? <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to toss. Do you know, do you know what work, where it came from? Oh, don't give me a lecture. In this, Why this not? Stuff. You, give me a le you gave me a lecture all the way through. <laughs> Woke came from the 1900s, part of the African American movement around social justice. Oh dear me! Well, dear stop me. chucking it out this there. This is so sad. So it's sad. Don't use that word. So, some of your potential candidates uh, have been associated with Voices for Freedom. They've got a bit of a, a, a radical agenda. As a former minister of uh, foreign affairs, and a very good one, do you put them right about their UN conspiracy theories? <laughs> I was a Minister of Foreign Affairs in, two, in 2007 when UNDRIP came up, that's the UN Declaration on Indigenous People's Rights. I said to Helen Clark, this is unconstitutional and it's undemocratic and we're not going to sign up to that and she agreed with me. Now why did you make a big song and dance about it um, imposing obligations on New Zealand when you know full well it's just a declaration? Oh, for goodness sake, what, what's hey poor poor? As a discussion document. No, it's not. It's give a, it's a discussion no, document. No, give these neoliberal and fanciful... I think you're getting things mixed up Radicals, there. no, no. And fanciful radicals are, are mentioned and they'll take a mile. It is the prototype of co-government in this country <gasps> and I'm not going to have it because it's wrong and the biggest victim of co-government will be the ordinary Maori at the bottom in whose name these radical Māoris make this, these claims. Who's the radical well, Māori? No, no, no. While they feel off the, feed off the teat of the state and nothing gets down to ordinary people. I've never forgotten where I came from. My family was born in a tent. No house, no nothing. And so I'm not going to forget where I came from and the, the great dream and hope of progress that a Labour government and then a national government in the 40s and the 50s gave to my family. That's what I want back in my country. I know what poverty smells, tastes and feels like with a great acuity. I know what it's like for a mother to be worried about the next three cents, for goodness sake, with a, family with, with a family of 11 children. Hmm. And I'm dealing with parliamentarians and Ma a lot of Maori ones who've got no idea what on earth their people are feeling like. So Maori are the enemy of Maori? Well, of course they That's are. That's what you're saying. Of course they are. Moana, I've got news for you. Your line of thinking ain't going to win this election. Why would Māori vote for New Zealand first when you're chucking out words like apartheid, when you're against co-governance? Because ordinary Māori out there working 70, 80 hours a week, sometimes three jobs, know that one guy understands them. That's You're why. dog whistling, though. Oh, they're dogs, are they? You're dog no, whistling. So these Māori are... are You've these, gone from whistle so these, to dog whistling. So you, according to you, these Māori are dogs. No, you're twisting words That's what that as means. you are want to do. No, you're being careless with your words and I'm not getting with them. So it's OK... I'm to out to defend ordinary people, Maori, European, Indians, Chinese, don't care what they are. We're all New Zealanders here. We've got one chance working together. If you get back into Parliament, will you see the term out? Are you interested in staying for the whole term? Because New Zealand First and Winston Peters are one and the same thing, really. That's what we think about when we think about New Zealand First. You know... 
uh, all my advisors say to me, when you get in front of the media, Winston, try and be nice and try and smile. You but do. That's, you do it that, beautifully. But that's an insult. You do it beautifully. It's just an insult. Look, I've been around too long. You've asking me because you're agistic in your attitude. Oh, ridiculous. I'm not agistic. And I want Whenever you to know, I look at there's, those... one, there's one population called Maori who respect their elders and for oh, very good reasons. Bad. Look. Let me tell you something about this thing. I believe in the romance and glamour of a thing called democracy. It's a, a profession that can do the worst of people more quickly than any other I know. But it also is a profession that can do great things for people more quickly than any other profession I know. And that's why I'm on a mission to win this election. And he looks into the camera with steely eyes. Well, no, I'm looking at you. The camera's there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm going to hey, go. Thank you very much. I've got a guy of work to do.